Death. 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 Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Death by Daylight. This is episode 8. I am Josh and uh, we've got uh, the same crew but a new crew today. Uh, Juan is, is out today unfortunately. He had something to take care of but our good friend uh, Manny makes his Death by Daylight debut. It only took 8 episodes buddy. How do you feel? <laughs> I mean pretty awesome i guess <laughs> good um manny and i used to be on a podcast together with darren uh who is hopefully going to be rejoining us at some point um but uh in the meantime we've got manny we've also got ernie what's up what's up everybody and of course jesus hey there everyone how's y'all going tonight is he getting drunk tonight? <laughs> uh, I, am, I, I am drinking already it has been a long stressful work week so i am uh drinking an amaretto sour right now it is fucking tasty and i'm ready to go tonight boys excellent good to Ooh. hear uh you if you want to play no what's amber. up um if you uh if you want to uh go ahead and please comment uh down below if you would like to request uh that we talk about things or when we start to talk about talk about things you can comment and join in the in the drinking game, um, you know whatever you want. But please participate so we can tailor what we're doing to help you guys. Um, welcome to please everybody watching. Um, sorry, I do that every single fucking time uh, when I have to <laughs> when I have to uh, switch over. Um, so tonight we've got a special treat for you. Uh, well, we've got lots of special treats. Darren is actually going to have a segment tonight uh, that's ready to go once we get uh, going here. We've got the drinking game. We've got uh, a, a cover of a Manson song that we're going to do for you at the very end of the episode. And we've got, of course, Charlie fucking Manson um, and the Manson family that uh, were the perpetrators of the La Bianca and Tate murders. Um, if you want to play with, uh, Ernie on, well, after this, obviously, uh, Lil Poochie Vert 666, um, Jesus is J Texas Music, and if Manny making his debut, Monkey Boy with two eyes, 18, uh, all of those obviously for PlayStation Network. Um, as people join in, we'll continue to ask, uh, to comment and to participate, but in the meantime, if this is your first time listening, you can go ahead and like and subscribe. Now that all that boring shit's out of the way, what are we drinking tonight, boys? Why don't you start us off, Manny? I am drinking from Rogue Brewery, uh, Bat Squatch IPA, Hazy oh. IPA. Rogue Brewer Brewery, Jesus. Brewery. Um, <laughs> and uh, in my favorite, well, my second favorite state of Oregon, um, they make a lot of really good beer. One of my favorite beers in the world, Dead Guy Ale, comes out of Rogue. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. So Fun fact, you have never uh, for Josh's graduation, I actually got him a bar tap of Dead Guy Ale. Yeah, dude, and it is sitting right here in my room on the shrine. Um, I used it on my guitar holders, uh, <laughs> and it's fucking badass, so thank you for that. Uh, if you've never tried Rogue before, please go and have a little bit of Rogue beer. They make all sorts of good stuff, not just pale ales. Uh, what about Jesus? You kind of already told us, but why don't you remind people what you're drinking? I am drinking an amaretto sour. Uh, mm. Ernie had told me about this drink. I, I was like, I don't want to fucking try that. I tried it. It is delicious. I cannot <laughs> stop drinking it. Did you make it with an egg white? Yes, sir. Good. Jesus, uh, we're finding out, has was actually born to be a bartender uh, and instead chose uh, to be a nurse, but... Um, in his in his off time, he's a bartender. What about you, Ernie? What are you drinking? What does this sound like? Uh, White Claw. <laughs> Correct. 
ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Burr, 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 burr. Well, I'm right there with you, buddy. Uh, I'm having myself a White Claw. I'm also drinking uh, margarita made with Espelone tequila. And uh, I will also be taking shots of Espelone this evening when it is appropriate. I actually have um, a, a drink of a mezcal mule, too. So. Mezcal mule. Um, I, I will be taking shots of Don Julio Repo. Uh. Don Julio Repo. Um, great tequila. Um, I'm, I have to admit that the uh, the uh, Ernie's Ernie's liquor sounds a little bit better for me personally. Um, but a, a lot of good stuff. It sounds like. Uh, and speaking of good liquor and good friends and all that stuff, uh, we're gonna go over to the bartender segment, who's gonna tell you our themed drink of the night. If you want to try to make it at home. Uh, or make it for next time, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is our good pal Darren talking to you about what you're drinking. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Maybe not. Our good pal All right, here we go. A time in Hollywood, and you might remember the cocktail of choice in there was the whiskey sour by Leonardo DiCaprio's character. Uh, we already did the whiskey sour here, so we're going to do a variation: the New York sour. So we're going to go ahead and do two ounces of bullet bourbon, a half ounce of simple syrup, a half ounce of lemon juice, egg white. We're going to, go and give that a shake over a large cube in a, in a rock glass, and then top it with a nice Cabernet Sauvignon, a <laughs> red wine there. And uh, it's going to make a nice layer. Go ahead and uh, give it like a lemon zest and a dehydrated lemon for the top. And there you go. There's your New York sour. Back to you, Josh. Talk so, uh, I, I don't know what made it happen. Um, but, uh, that was our good friend, Darren, uh, talking to you about what we're drinking tonight. Uh, Juan is drinking a Pepsi. Uh, Oryx, Roy. welcome back, buddy. Uh, welcome back. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for watching. Uh, we hope you're going to get drunk with us tonight or at least hang out. Uh, so that was our good friend, Darren, who is working at International. You can always go catch him at International. That is I N T L downtown El Paso, uh, and he will make you the best cocktails of your whole entire life. Um, Caesar, uh, the fuck isn't he working too? Yeah, that was not live, Caesar. <laughs> uh, he he, uh, he pre-recorded something for us so that he could help us out with the bartender segment. Um, our good friend Caesar Perez uh, over at El Velvet Elvis, if you want to go. I don't know if they're open. Yeah, Comment yeah, if you're open, Caesar. <laughs> Oh, yes. shit. Okay, my bad. Um, I'm listening at Eve. I just hopped on. Yeah. Uh, so go visit our good friends at El Velvet Elvis inside of the Pershing Inn uh, on Pershing Street off of Piedras. Uh, also will make you the best cocktails that you will have in the city. Award-winning bartenders out there at El Velvet Elvis. Welcome, Caesar. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into the uh, drinking game. Was that too much promotion or what? No, it's good. <laughs> I was just gonna say, uh, uh, we're really ooh, looking for I'm a drinking, uh, at this point. I'm just drinking a Paloma, noise. I love those. So I'm gonna be playing as Legion today. <laughs> so the cool thing about Legion is it's not just one person; it's technically four of them. I mean, they all do the same shit; they just look different. <laughs> They're a group of of kids, pretty much. Frank, Julie. Or, yeah, Frank, Julie, Joey, and Susie. Right here you're seeing Susie there. And then we got Joey here. They're pretty much the cool ones. Susie's fucking adorable. <laughs> but they were all a bunch of kids. They went to this place called Ormond. It's a little resort that they would go hang out at. So this cleaner actually went up there one time and caught them up there when they weren't supposed to be there. Frank ended up killing him. They were all shook. And we're like, holy shit, we just killed someone. And they threw him in the back of Joey's car and took him up a little bit higher into the mountains. Tried to bury the body as much as they could. Joey actually heard a sound and there was a bunch of mist up ahead. Uh, the mist being the entity in Dead by Daylight. And they all got sucked into here to kill people. So Awesome. Pretty cool. Um... So there, there was a lot of directions we thought we would go with Legion. Um, the first of those being the one we went with, which is the Manson family. 
Uh, but we also thought about the purge. We thought about um, other things. If you think that uh, we could have matched this with something else, let us know. And the next time we play Legion, we'll go ahead and try to take your advice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the drinking game uh, to remind everybody of the rules. Although I say rules very loosely because you can do whatever you want. You're adults. Um, at, if Ernie gets two kills, we take a shot. If he gets four kills, we take two shots. Um, and you can take a drink every time he gets a hook. Uh, as well as taking a big drink on that first and third kill. Um, he's going to go ahead and get into that screen whenever he's ready. And uh, how how excited are we to talk about the Manson family here, boys? Pretty excited, man. I mean, it's an iconic thing that happened in our life, and well, not in our lifetime, but it happened in in real life, you know. Yeah. I, uh, um, go ahead, Jesus. No, I was gonna say, you know what? Before going into this, I knew a little bit, but now that I've really, I kind of read into it, this guy was fucking crazy man like <laughs> dude yeah um he, he really like I, I as much as you know I, I he's a scumbag and all that fascinating absolutely fascinating charlie manson uh and said a lot of really intelligent things despite the fact that he uh murdered people said some really really intelligent things um and uh i'm excited i'm excited we're gonna talk about uh so some spoiler alerts here. Um, we're going to talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is a fairly new movie. I say new; it was like came out more than a year ago. But um, so if you haven't seen it, you don't want to be spoiled. When we start talking about it, maybe maybe go to the bathroom, take a break. Uh, we're also going to be talking about um, the Manson family vacation. We're going to talk about some of the documentaries. We're going to talk about his music. Uh, we're going to talk about the actual murderers, obviously. Uh, Tex Watson and 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 the girls that uh, that assisted Tex Tex Watson in killing, um, and it's gonna be an overall fucking great time. But that is all, of course, after no. Ernie does his killing. This is a. Uh, I'm actually. Is, uh, I'm gonna expose you here, buddy. Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm actually running a very fucked up and very annoying build because it's a slowdown build because Slow <laughs> pretty much down. everything everything uh. I put on there makes the game a little bit longer. So, if we're in here for a minute, boys, I'm sorry, but fuck these survivors and their gen rushing. <laughs> as long as you you get four kills and I get to take two shots, buddy, it's all fucking gravy. Um, <laughs> Which would give us some uh, time for you here. To come I'm, up. I'm gonna I'm gonna let people I'm gonna let the give the people fuck. the truth here for a second. Um, this is your main uh car killer, right? This is this is your these are your people here. Yes, but see the thing about Legion is it's they've nerfed her slash him them a lot. Uh, making excuses. Make someone's behind you. Someone's yeah, behind. The, turn around. Turn around. The fucking the, the caveats here, boys. I don't like it. I want to. Uh, I want the. I want it straightforward. I really um, need to take these shots, Ernie. All right. Here. Dude, Hasis, let's just take a let's just take a shot with the good people as a right, as a gesture, as a, as a nice it. gesture of good faith nice. here. Wait, Thank so you you're showing... telling me drunk Hasis is not showing up tonight? What the fuck we'll is this? see. I got a I got a shot of bullet right here, saying otherwise. Let's go ahead and take a shot, uh, Manny. Of course, if you want to join us, you're more than welcome. But um, what the fuck? Here we go. Uh, Amber, we are going to be talking about some books, but Helter Skelter was actually not his book. Uh, Helter Skelter was a book that was put together by the DA uh, in his case, as, long, as well as a uh, criminal investigative writer. Uh, we definitely will be talking about Helter Skelter, um, which was a central theme uh, in the defense, but also obviously was made into a book in 1974 after they had been convicted. So uh, we'll, we will be talking about it, yes. All right. Shots, boys. Thank you, Cheers. Uh, ev Cheers everyone. Everybody. Everyone who's uh, tuning in. Yeah, Cheers. thank you. Thank you for coming back and uh, to Helter Skelter. The slide. <laughs> yeah, to Helter Skelter, the British um, slide. The British slide. Uh, I actually don't even know what it looks like. Apparently, it's a little more complicated than just a uh, slide. But <laughs> you ever play a ro roller coaster tycoon? I fucking love Roller Coaster Tycoon. In, in Roller Coaster Tycoon, you could you could build a simple slide. 
it's like one of the first rides that you could build. It looks exactly like that. It's, it's uh, I know I gave a very, not so much descriptive, but it's a very basic ass, like a simple slide look that looks like it's in a tent, I guess. No. Ernie, what are you doing? What is that? Thank you, Jesus. What is that, uh, closing your eyes to wish so you I've never, people? I've never seen this fucking map before. Was this added recently? This is this the is Stranger, Stranger Things, things. map. And was it added recently? <laughs> um, Early yeah, last been... year. Oh, oh shit. I'm I way fucking, behind. I fucking hate this map. Yeah, it seems like it's super annoying for the killers, yeah. but it also seems like it's super terrifying if you're a survivor. Ah. <sighs> Oh, she bitch is right there. Ooh, <laughs> stabbing a chair, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is not going well for our boy here. Um, well, I'm glad I'm glad we took that one shot. Yeah, I'm Aww. glad we took a preemptive shot because I I didn't want to be thirsty. I don't want to be sober. Uh, you know, you wanna. Just... I have a I have a small idea if you guys if you boys are open to it while Ernie's playing if we could uh, throw in a small little drinking game in be in between this drinking Please. game that we're having right now. Yes, All right. go on. So you've heard of I don't know what what we will call this segment, but often they call it a two two truths and a lie. Two so, truths and a lie. So we'll take a bet. I'm gonna give you two truths and a lie. All if right. you can guess the uh, if you could guess the lie. I will take a shot, and if I trick you, you could take it. Uh, you guys will take a shot. Love it. Go ahead. All right. Anyone who's watching right now, if you answer this correctly, then us as an entire team will take a shot. Okay? Guys, man. <laughs> Dude, only one person has to get it right, and then we all take a shot. And we're all taking a shot. All right. It seems unbalanced, but let's go ahead and work <laughs> out the kinks later. <laughs> it's very unbalanced, because I don't think that we're going to be drinking with Ernie tonight. This would not, <laughs> this not fly in the in uh, Vegas, but go ahead. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's 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 pull up these uh, these Manson facts. I just keep on, on a regular here. Oh, yes. This wasn't uh, scripted at all. It was not scripted. It's all it's all improvised here at Death by Daylight, folks. All right. Let's see. Just I, I have a few facts that I looked up, so let me go ahead and uh, look, look at some. Okay, I got one here for you. This is a fact, all right? Take, take note of me saying mm -hmm. this is a fact. All right. Marilyn Manston uh, got married to a 26-year-old while he was in prison. They were together for nine Marilyn years. Marilyn Manson or Charlie Manson? Oh, Charlie's Manson. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> about, Wrong about, Manson, I, boys. I was, I was about to say, you know, not true already. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, okay. So go ahead. <laughs> Charles Manson. God damn it, Manson. All right, this, the bullet's already hitting me, boys. Uh, all right. Uh, Manson was married to a 26-year-old. He was there in uh, prison for nine years. They were together, and they got only married so she can use his corpse as a tourist attraction after his death. Alright, fact one. Alright. Fucking dead hard. Fact two is, you can still join, there is someone who started a new Manson cult using the Helter Skelter books and everything from Charles Manson's uh, teachings of while he was uh, alive on uh, joinmansonscult.com Okay. And lastly, uh, while in prison, uh, Manson joined the Aryan Brotherhood and was known to be a submissive, white power bottom, sexually aggressive <laughs> member of the gang. Uh, so this oh, is this man. is two two truths and a lie, Jesus. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, well I know what the lie is already, and I feel like you, you set this shit. up to make a joke about him being a power bottom. I You're gonna go the same way. You, you gonna go with Power Bottom? Yeah, I, I know that. First of all, I know that at least one of the other ones is true, and I just don't see where how they could even possibly have evidence for that. <laughs> uh, well, that is a truth. <laughs> I'm sorry, boys, but that is a truth. No, where did you? No. Where, where, what are the sources here? What are the sources? A uh, Wikipedia, of course. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got all I got all of these from. Uh, it is a uh, the top forty nine twisted facts about Manson, 
and this actually came out to number six. So it reads exactly, White Power Bottom. After returning to prison, Manson held a little sway. He was temporarily accepted into the Aryan Brotherhood, but as a submissive to sexually aggressive member of the gang. He was known as a White Power Bottom. Um, I, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, so the, the, the lie <laughs> is, <laughs> Juan, fact. <laughs> uh, you, there's no, there is no uh, joinmansoncult.com. Uh, you made that I, up, huh? I made. The, I tried to join. I was like, you know what? This sounds like a pretty good one. Like, I'm gonna see if I could join right now. So I, and, I knew about his wife, uh, and and that that last fact just sounded too fucking far in the distance for me. So. Yeah, it, it definitely sounded something like uh, it just would make up right on the planet. That means that uh, Manny and I are taking some small shots. If you guys at home want to go ahead and uh, join in our, our company, our, our miserable company, uh, if Ernie ends up getting some kills here, it's going to turn into a he nightmare. Just, he, he got one. He, yeah, he got one. Well, that's not a shot, so I'm not afraid yet. Um, <laughs> so, uh, cheers, everybody, to... Uh, oh, I was about to cheers to something real bad. Uh, cheers, cheers, cheers to being a white power bottle. No, that's what I was no, going to cheers no. to, and I decided oh, it wasn't no. good. We're not oh. going to do it. Uh, no. okay. Here, no, here's just to being not. a power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to being a power bottom. <sighs> oh. It's not actually about power so much as it's about speed. <laughs> um, agility, dexterity of the anus. Talking about speed, wasn't this a... Uh, oh, this, I, I had a fucked up build. This is going to be a very long match. It seemed like everyone got away really quickly. Right? Well, because yeah, look yeah. at this. Uh, Check this what out. What are we looking at, bud? What are we looking at, bud? Wait for it. Oh. Oh. Oh, red levels. <laughs> That's well, why. folks, uh, for those of you at home, uh, that means that nobody uh, is taking shots this round. Uh, Ernie playing his main... Coming up short, uh, embarrassing the whole squad. I got you um, next round. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I, I I have a lot of faith in you most of the time, but you uh, <laughs> you seem a little bit off your fucking game here, bud. I hear this conversation with Ernie a lot. Like, oh, girl, this is gonna be a long time. All right, my bad, girl. I got you. I got you next round. <laughs> next I got round, you on girl. the next round. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I gotta like get her. yours before you can get you can get yours. You know what I'm saying? It's like when um, Ernie tells a girl, "Let's make a porno." She responds, "Now nah, let's make let's, let's make a TikTok." You you don't last that long. <laughs> God damn, dude, uh, that was that was pretty fucking good. I want to say Manny saw it somewhere, but if that was on the dump, uh, I will admit I good. saw it somewhere. Okay, all right. It was it, good, I mean, it, it was as good. long as it's not a Vine. It was a Vine that was seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, uh, no, was, that, yeah, it can't, a be a, can't be a, a two-pump chump there. Um, but, uh, hopefully, uh, everybody will get their nut next round. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and we can leave everyone satisfied, uh, all together. We can simultaneously arrive together in this next game. Um, but with the end of the first game... It does signal the beginning of our adventure with Charlie Manson. Or um, Marilyn Manson, whichever. <laughs> no, not Marilyn Manson, not whichever. Uh, sweet dreams are not made of these. <laughs> Am I the um, only one who heard that he gave, he uh, had a rib taken out in middle not school? Not only are you not the only one, but what? everyone in their whole... T everyone in the entire world has heard that. <laughs> yeah. Take a rib out to suck your own... What do you guys say? You guys, would you guys take a rib out to do it? No, no. I, I don't want any dicks in my mouth, including my own. Um, um, yeah, me neither, guys. Me neither. Juan, Juan says Legion got power bottomed. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah. Uh, just they did. obliterated. Um, <laughs> Tony, man, so, if you go against Red Ranks with Legion, it's just not going to happen. Because mm -hmm. they know how to fucking... Yeah. You can show me, Legion show me some... Uh, I want to I want to see some Death by Daylight players back that up. So if if there's any here and you want to comment on whether that's correct or not, uh, please do. So let's get into our boy Charlie, our boy Chuck, Chucky Manson. Um, 
just uh, an absolute lunatic. So his story starts uh, very young in life. He is going to a, a a boys' correctional school. He only spent 13 years out of his whole fucking life. 13 years out of his whole life were spent outside of an institution. Every other year of his life was spent in either the boys' correctional facility or a juvenile facility or a prison. Um, absolutely astounding. Just an, uh, just a maniac. Um, and, uh, and so he, you know, kind of doomed from the beginning, but his story actually starts with something that is dear to all of our hearts, which is music. Uh, Charlie Manson, when he got out of prison, um, as an adult wanted to be a rock star and he actually was not very fucking bad. You listened to some of his music, right, Jesus? Yeah, I did. Um, I was like, you know, let me... I was hearing that he did music, so I was like, all right, let me hear a few tracks of him. Uh, he has a really nice voice, man. Like, oh, you, dude, yes. I, I was impressed. I was like, God damn. All right. He I mean, has, I would say, I would say he, win, he wins American Idol, but definitely top ten. Definitely he, has top. A, he has a very good voice. He has a, a very uh, a, a unique voice. It's not a poppy voice. And was a heck of a guitar player, a great songwriter, and, and lyrically uh, phenomenal. So... Uh, it doesn't always come together. The recordings are so primitive and bad, just bad, that it's not easy to listen to. But the the content, the quality of the content is there, and you can tell right away. Um, and so he is, uh, he goes to a, mu a music producer named Terry Milcher. And Terry Milcher decides that uh, Charlie Manson is not a good enough musician to get a deal or to make a record and rejects uh, Charlie Manson, um, and this is already when Charlie had begun to assemble his group at the Spawn Ranch. So uh, he assembles, he's assembling a cult at the Spawn Ranch. He has young men, he has mostly young women, um, and everyone's having sex with each other, and that's how he gets more young people to join his drugs and sex and uh, the promise of peace and of living together in a commune type scenario. Uh, and he's a motherfucking talker, boy. He he can, he's got a silver tongue. He's got the gift of gab. He can lure people in. The 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 everyone that, even the people that went to jail for life because of him, come out and say the first time that I that I talked to Charlie Manson, it felt like I was talking to God. Um, and so so the guy is just an unbelievably gifted orator, um, and and a, and a pretty good musician and starts this cult on this old movie set that was used for, like, Western films in the 1930s and is now abandoned. Um, and that's where we first uh, stumble upon Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, which is kind of the feature outside of the feature today because it was such a fucking great movie. Uh, if you've listened to us before and you're going to continue to listen to us, I love Quentin Tarantino. Uh, what did you think about it, Manny? Did you see the movie? Yeah, I went to go watch it at Alamo Draft House, and you know, Beautiful. it was honestly a really good experience there. Not only that, but I mean, the mute. I think honestly, the movie was very, very well done, and it 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 had me from start to finish. Yeah, um, the the cinematography, as far as getting back into like this view of the '60s and how accurate everything was, uh, was truly mesmerizing. Everybody, welcome to the podcast, Jude. Jude, are you in here, buddy? I am here. And... Welcome, Jude. Oh, thank you. What, the what do you got to say about Charlie Manson, Jude? Well, I was going to touch uh, on the, how you were talking about like his influence on people. Fun fact on that: he, while he was in prison, because he like so when he when he had turned twenty one, he had ended up spending like seventeen years. Uh, uh -huh. Like his first seventeen years, like up thirty two years, and then ended up getting out of prison. He had actually asked them to keep him in there. He didn't want to leave. Um, well, he had been arrested before that. Like, well, while he was twenty one, he had just gone out of prison and went back in. And the reason why he went back in is he had gotten married to some lady, and uh, they they got caught. Like they were moving to California and got caught in a stolen car. And he had a son through her who actually he killed him. Yeah, so while he was in prison, like, for the 17 years, that's where he uh, started reading how to win friends and influence people. 
So he was big on that shit. So that, they were saying that that's kind of where his manipulation tactics started. Well, and, and, and while he never took an official IQ test, his IQ was thought to be in, at a genius level. So uh, you have to think that you're in a box for 13 years just consuming information uh, that you're able then to regurgitate, especially in the age before the Internet. You're going to be able to convince a lot of people of a lot of things, which he did. Um, he yep. convinced people that uh, the Beatles uh, wrote a song that can, that was God speaking directly to him to incite a race war. Um, he, but but way before that, he talked a lot about peace and love and unity and and living with God and amongst God and and feeling like uh, you were more than what the world had told you. So a lot of these kids that were ending up at Spawn Ranch were broken, abused, uh, outcasts, nobodies. And and if you look at some of these young women, unfortunately, um, you, you can see it and, and you can hear it when they talk about, you know, well, my dad didn't love me or, or you know, my I was abused, my family, this and that. A lot of them have very similar stories. And so Charlie Manson would immediately uh, pick out on their, in their vulnerabilities. Yeah. Um, so Sadie, no, no, no. Um, damn it. Um, Linda, Linda, uh, Kasabian? Kasabian. yeah, Kasabian. Kasabian. Um, Kasabian. There you go. <laughs> so she, the, the first night that she gets to Spawn Ranch, she ends up having yeah. sex with Tex Watson. But, uh, a, the night after that, after she had done a bunch of drugs, she ends up having sex with Charlie Manson, who she again oh. describes oh. as, as having sex with a God. He pointed out all of her flaws. He, he immediately called out her, her, for the lack of a better word, her daddy issues, told her directly, like, you have a father complex, you have a dad, you have a dad deal. And, and she was like, yes, like I, I do. I, my, I hated my stepfather. He hated me. Um, and, and so he was just able, he was just a master manipulator. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you see that you don't see a lot of that in once upon a time in Hollywood because it doesn't folk Manson is literally in the movie for what, like, seven seconds or something like that i mean it's it's hardly anything at all kind yeah of how he was with the murders he was hardly involved with the murders yes well, i mean like you. yeah <laughs> but yeah he he was barely involved with the, the murders quentin tarantino makes that into a metaphor and barely makes him involved in the movie at all um but you see his influence you go to spawn ranch in the movie you see all these you hear all these women and and, and texts talk about him you see how viciously loyal they are to Charlie Manson, even though you never actually see him, which is indicative of what happened that night, those two nights with the Tate and LaBianca murders. Uh, what was your favorite part of the movie, everybody? Uh, in the comments, let us know if you liked the movie, what your favorite part was, but also you guys... Did, uh, uh, what... did you guys talk about how uh, Tate actually oh, lived sorry, in El Paso for a bit? She actually went to... We have to... not talked about that, no. Was it... Kate or Urban, I think. Oh, Sharon Tate. Uh, yeah, so Sharon Tate went to Urban High School um, for like like not very long, right? But she 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 liked El Paso. She talked about El Paso uh, during her career uh, and lived here very briefly. She was a military brat, I think. Yeah. Yes. Um, cool. I didn't, I didn't so, know that at all. I mean, it was cool till she got murdered. Um, I, I I feel bad for <laughs> for Tate just because she was a, you know she was an actress and uh, I feel like with when you think of Sharon Tate you think of her murder not so much of her uh, her, her career in in movies and stuff. Have so. you have you by any chance got to watch any of her movies? I I haven't and every time it's they are not really... good. Oh, okay, so <laughs> you were gonna ask him, have you ever been murdered? Can you speak up? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you I, ever I been through in, a murder by? Have you ever been uh, involved in a cult? So, I mean, um, I think they even touched up on it, like her her acting, how it is in the movie. Because I mean, even if you watch like the time that she's watching her movies, it's wow. not a good acting either. Well, and so she's married to one of the most prolific directors in the entire world at the time, in Roman Polanski, and and uh, and he and she can't get any work. So. Uh, that's not a good sign. Um, and uh, so back to uh, kind of the movie, kind of the story. Charlie Manson is a musician. Um, 
Terry Melcher tells him, you're not good enough, buddy. I don't want you to be part of my studio. I think you're kind of a fucking nutbag. And I actually don't ever want to associate with you again. So this is where our night of the murders kind of starts because Sharon Tate uh, was living in, and Roman Polanski were living in Terry Melcher's old house. And Charlie Manson actually visits them, uh, I mean, creepily. I would not visit, but stalks them in that house. Um, and like is watching them and shit and that's and that's when he gets the idea that he's gonna that he's gonna fucking kill these people even though terry melcher's not there he's gonna fucking uh get revenge on these on whoever is living there and at one point um he in the movie and apparently this also happened in real life he actually rings the doorbell and terry uh sharon tate's friends opens the door and he's like hey does terry live here and he's like nah man terry doesn't live here anymore and then that's it. That's all they would ever see of Charlie Manson, not knowing that he was already plotting their demise. Amber is saying Valley of the Dolls is probably her best movie. I would say by a mile, Amber, you are right. <laughs> um, it, yeah, I mean, Valley of the Dolls is a pretty good movie, and, and the rest of her stuff is almost unwatchable. So, um, yeah, there Ernie's got two kills. One, Ernie's one, got two seven. kills? Mm -hmm. Ernie's got two kills. Um, what Real about... One, one had put a comment. He put uh, he had affiliation with the Beach Boys, right? So yeah, he did. He he was uh, speaking with Dennis Wilson, and you there's bitch. another fact there. He he Brian that, Wilson. Uh, I I think it was was it Brian Wilson or Dennis? Wilson? Like the leader of the Beach Boys or his brother? <laughs> Maybe his brother. It was De it was Dennis. I got that name. Oh, oh for sure. But I don't know. It's but anyway, he helped. He composed that song. Never learn <laughs> not to love. So that's holy crazy. shit! That was on uh, Pet Sounds. I think so. That was on uh, Now Hits number two, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call music, Charlie yeah, Manson edition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very clever, Jude. Very clever. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're gonna expand the drinking game a little bit. It'll give us a little break here in the Charlie Manson business. Uh, I say Ernie has two kills. Let's go ahead and take a fucking shot. Let's take a shot. Uh, let, we'll, we'll welcome Jude into the drinking game. Everybody at home can take a, can take a shot with us again. Let us know what you're drinking. Let us know what you think. Tell us if we're wrong. Tell Ernie that he sucks. Wherever you want to. It's an open forum here. So, um, uh, in, Jude, in what are you drinking? Oh, go for it, Jude. Uh, let's see. Can I have you guys choose? Should I take a shot of the... Uh, the, the tequila, the tres, I can't say that. Or the, uh, <laughs> the eagle rare. There you go. <laughs> uh, I think you're, I, I mean, personally, I think you're the, the eagle rare guy, so that's what yeah. you should do. But uh, if you want to vote in the comments, you can. Um, Jesus, you were you were talking, I cut you off, buddy. What were you saying? No, no, I was going to say that, um, so, uh, for that, that murder of Sharon Tate, she was pregnant at the time. Uh, when she was murdered, and in the movie of The Haunting of Sharon Tate, uh, she is played by the uh, beautiful Hilary Duff. Mm, who was, mm, mm. Another shot, boys. Who, uh, yep. I, I? Fun you fact got, in that yeah, movie. He, uh, he's, he's 3K now. Wow, he's going to be 4K. Oh, I, I shouldn't have expanded uh, the drinking game. Let's take the shot, know. and then we'll talk about Hilary Duff. Here's to the shit talking that we gave Ernie earlier. Oh my god. Yeah, here's to Ernie proving us wrong. Everybody at home, you owe us two shots, uh, Amber. Uh, welcome <laughs> to Death by Daylight. Go ahead and take two shots for us. Yep. <coughs> oh. Oh, it's starting it. to catch up with me. It's starting to catch up with me. Oh. Uh, I regret every decision that has led up to this. Um... So what were you saying, Hansus? No, I was gonna say, um, so in that, so Sharon Tate was pregnant when she was murdered, and in that movie, uh, when Hilary Duff is playing her, she's pregnant. Uh, fun fact is, Hilary Duff was actually pregnant at that time when she played uh, Sharon Tate in that movie. Oh my God, that's like bad that's juju, kind of no? Yeah. That I would, I would think so, wouldn't you? Uh, t yeah, you know what? It, did any of you guys watch that movie, The Haunting of Sharon Tate? Dude, I, I did not. I'm going to be honest right. with you. I well, didn't either. 
I was a little hesitant because uh, on, on fucking Amazon, uh, uh, what is it? Not Amazon Prime. Prime. Is it is it Amazon Prime that you? Uh, it watch? is. Yeah. Anyway, okay. <laughs> it had like fucking one star, so I'm like, uh, she is a, she is a rocket though, so I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and watch this movie. She anyway. is a rocket. Uh, and uh, it it was more of they made the whole Charlie Charlie Manson thing seem uh, very supernatural, like he was a. Uh, Fucking with her mind, like he was haunt, he was haunting them. And that uh, sounds shitty as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like a very supernatural thing. That sounds like at one, terrible. Like twenty minutes into it, she's getting murdered, and I'm like, that's it. The movie's fucking done. But no, she wakes up from a nightmare, and like they were playing with like a fucking Ouija board, and like it was like a, it was oh like a very god. Uh, that's it was a supernatural type thing, uh, as far as them uh, killing her and everything like that. So. Twit, twist plot at the end is plot twist. You, plot, yeah, <laughs> fucking bullets catching up to you guys. Uh, twist plot. Twist, twist plot. Uh, he's a power bottom, right? <laughs> uh, no, so a plot twist at the end is you. You think that Sharon Tate gets away and the family gets away, and um, the movie ends like that, and then fucking uh, the cops are showing up as far as they. They make you think that Sharon Tate and the family fucking kills the the Manson family. So when the cops are there showing up, Tate's looking at the bodies, and they they uncover them, and it's Sharon Tate and all of her family and her husband. They're all fucking dead. <gasps> so now she's now she's a ghost at this point, and I'm just like, this, this all right. I guess. <laughs> I, oh my I, god, that sounds so fucking bad, dude. So uh, point. So I gave it a, I, I gave it a. Um, <laughs> why? You know, were being nice. The the well, story, the Charlie Manson story is already so interesting without all of that other bullshit. Like, <laughs> ugh, ugh. Um, so Hillary Duff, Rocket. I'll get. I'll, you can take the two stars for that. Uh, but Margot Robbie. Uh, come on. I mean, I mean, she was hotter than actual Sharon Tate, like by a mile. So. Yeah, yeah, Margot Robbie uh, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Also in that movie, you have uh, Aaron Samuels, you know, uh, homeboy from uh, Mean Girls. Homeboy from Mean Girls, main main guy. Wait, why the fuck are we talking about Mean Girls on a fucking horror podcast? (laughs) Because because (laughs) Jesus insists on talking about the haunting of Sharon Tate. We haven't even gotten to to Manson Family Murder or Manson Family Vacation yet. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this, guys? That's a a good movie. I am ready, yes. Wait, Jesus, wait, wait. Jesus, you can't see what the fuck. Oh my god. Thank you, Regina George. Um. Uh, so, done. You all have a good night. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we will, since we're talking about Sharon Tate anyway, we will get into the the horrors of her mor- murder of her mortar um, while we <laughs> while we continue to tell the story and we continue to talk about uh-huh. the movies. Sharon Before Tate, you uh, go, go into ahead, that, um, yes. I'm gonna switch over to Survivor. I don't know if you want to enlighten everybody of the uh, Survivor drinking portion. Yeah, so the Survivor drinking game is incredibly simple. If Ernie <laughs> survives, we take a shot. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and up the ante on this one. If you don't survive, you take two shots. Ooh. I accept. Damn. Boom. Love it. Now, um, can, I, can I add on to it? Uh, sure. Maybe. Let's make this interesting. Since you're the <laughs> guest spot. Go <laughs> uh, if he... Is unable to get three gens running. He takes two shots. Nah, because what if I'm running the carry the whole yeah. time? And All he's right. already taking two shots, and that's four shots. All right, I'll, I'll up the ante. If you don't survive, go. you have to start your own cult after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... A cult revolving around bestiality? <laughs> I'm just oh going to run as a very bright pink bunny. <laughs> Bold, so. bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> yeah. um, so, hey, Ernie, I'll, uh, I'll take a side bet with you if you're if you're willing to do it. Okay. He's already taking so many shots. It's a side bet. I'll uh, I'll take a I'll take a side bet. If you are down to run the uh, Indy 500, 
two laps. Oh. Two laps. Well, we, how, how many laps do you want to do? Two or three laps? <sighs> two. Fuck you, man. <laughs> what's so, what's the prize here, guys? We were so, fucking moving on. So this is gonna be fun for everybody that's watching, like, and is interested in Dead by Daylight. <laughs> um, the Indy Five Hundred, like, it's so fucking stupid. So basically, I cannot do anything. So I'm not gonna. So if we'd run this, I'm not gonna survive. <laughs> For one, <laughs> um, I can literally only run around the map. <laughs> I mean, around the corner, like the whole map, he has to just do laps. Yeah. And he's so we'll got to do two laps before he does anything else. Yeah. Yep. So if you could do two laps before anything else, I will take a shot. Stay left. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Sharon Tate. <laughs> um, so Sharon Tate, uh, her murder was specifically brutal because, uh, again, she was pregnant. Eight and a half months pregnant. She was so close to having her baby. And at the end of her life, she begged. She begged them to keep her alive until she could have her baby. And she would offer herself as a hostage. And they could have as much money or whatever they wanted if they would just keep her alive until she could have birth. Uh, they did not comply with that. They killed Sharon Tate. They stabbed her in the stomach, killing her baby. Um, and her her murder was particularly horrific. Although there's plenty of her of horrific murders that go on here, and this is getting into the juicy part. Uh, while Ernie plays his survival his survivor game, we'll get into the details of the murder. Um, the first person to die at the Tate house was a young man who was actually there just visiting the groundskeeper. He came uh, into his car out of the gate at the wrong time. Um, Tex Watson goes up to his window and asks him uh, what's going on, or, or, or asks him to lower his window. He's like, hey, what's going on? Uh, Tex Watson pulls out his gun. The kid begs for his life. He gets shot four times and dies after he was actually stabbed in the hand uh, trying to defend himself. Um, then the four people inside of the Tate house would die next. Uh, one of them was, uh, they, well, they were all just Sharon Tate's friends uh, who were partying there while Roman Polanski was out, and um, and they were all brutally murdered. One, the, the other male, or there were two males in the house uh, besides the kid that died. One of them was beat over the head 47 times with the end of the gun and then stabbed a lot in addition to that. So some of that was obviously done post-mortem after he'd already died, but it actually broke the handle off of the gun he was beaten so bad with it um and then they obviously stabbed Sharon Tate and they wrote all sorts of stuff on the walls with her blood to under Charlie Manson's um uh for and get people to turn on each other uh so that they could all live out the end of days in the spawn ranch which gets us into Helter Skelter what do you know about Helter Skelter Jude it was a decent song. It wasn't the best. <laughs> no, it's a, yeah, it's not. It's not a good song. I love the fucking um, Beatles. The Beatles. Um, the Beatles. Yeah, so it was. Why do you say in a Scottish accent? Ben. No, it, it's it's English, but it's Cockney. The Beatles. <laughs> a Scottish accent would be the Beatles. <laughs> the Beatles. Everybody in the in the chat, if you want to hear us do nothing but English accents for the remainder of the podcast. <laughs> Oh, please, uh, God. Let me get an F in the only... chat. <laughs> that um, right there is not an English accent, okay, brother? Uh, David Koresh, everybody. Um, it's still fucking a phenomenal accent. The Lord um, has told me about Hell oh Skelter. <laughs> oh, uh, can you, will you save that for the fucking Heaven's Gate uh, pod, or whatever the fuck they were? Um... So, what, what can you tell me about actual Helter Skelter, Jude? I, I mean, the, the song or the book or the theory, whatever you want. Well, from, from what I know, like what I gathered, I mean, he was he was at that point like proclaimed that. Well, he proclaimed that he was the new Messiah, right? And you know, from there, he figured that that basically 
when that race war occurred that they would pretty much overpower them. So they wanted to like live underground or something, right? And come back up, you know, as soon as things blew over and try to overpower this. I don't know. I, that's what I had. I yeah. Had so, to. so Helter Skelter was a song by the Beatles that uh, Manson claimed spoke to him directly by God to start a race war. And then him and the chosen people, uh, which was everybody at Spawn Ranch, would bunker down, wait for the race war to ensue, and then build a new population after the the uh, dust had settled and the smoke had cleared. Um, he later, in an FBI interviews, would say he didn't believe any of that. He didn't say any of that. Everything that, that had to do with Helter Skelter was made up by the district attorney that was prosecuting him. Um, and... And he was essentially, he he said, it, was it easier, is it easier to believe that a bunch of really fucked up kids went and killed people, or is it easier to sell people that I'm a fucking madman who orchestrated the whole thing? Um, that's what he would say in his FBI interview later. Um, but but uh, as far as the book is concerned, I mean, it goes into fucking crazy detail about his plan and what he would tell people and how he would tell them that he talked to God and he spoke directly to God. And, uh, and they were convinced. I mean, these people in, in the same way that people believed in David Koresh and the same people way that people believed in J Jim Jones, people believed in Charlie Manson. They were willing, Sadie, uh, um, Sadie Atkins, Susan Atkins, who they called Sadie was, was, I mean, her interview which some of it is actually at the beginning of uh, an Alkaline Trio song about her called Sadie. Um, but, I mean, she goes, uh, I would do anything for God, and Charlie was God. And, I mean, have you ever felt that way about anybody in your life? For me, it's just Jamie Ben. Like, <laughs> other than Jamie Ben, I don't feel that way about anybody. Have you guys ever felt that way about anyone in your whole life? Um, no. I mean, be, besides my, uh, besides my son, I would do anything for him. But other than that, no, I don't. <laughs> my wife's listening. Oh, really, motherfucker! <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> motherfucker, bro. It's just, Come on, just now, him, bro. Oh, oh, you want to talk about mom? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Jesus was married this week. Everybody, let's get a fucking. Round Thank of applause you. for our boy Jesus who was married this week. Let me get an married F in the chat. COVID. Let yeah, me get an F in the chat. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of a pandemic, um, was able to to bond in union with the love of his life. Congratulations, um, buddy. Before we uh, before we keep going with the Helter Skelters, um, since Jesus over here wants to go ahead and make me fucking run around the map like a fucking idiot. Uh -huh. um, we need to um, pick a starting point for me, um, so that way I, we can calculate the two laps. <laughs> I say, Killer I time. say the, I say the first gate that you see, the first main gate that you see. Another thing, I picked a really small map, so fuck you. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Son oh. of a bitch. <laughs> so I mean, go, going back on the Beatles, Helter Skelter, and as far as Manson hearing that. Uh, message through that song. Um, have you guys ever had that experience where, like, you listen to a song and you're like, "Oh, this song's about this," and then you later realize, "Holy shit, that song was not about this at all." Yeah. I had a lot. You said yes, oh. Gene. Give us, give us an example. <laughs> okay. There's this band called Amorosa, and I jammed out to this song thinking it was about a relationship, the death of a relationship. It turned out it was the death of this child. <laughs> but Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It's not funny, but it was just, it was just kind of funny. It's funny. It's plenty <laughs> funny. I think it's funny. It's just a weird shit. I'm over here thinking, like, damn, this guy's hurt. It looks that like you're not going to make that laugh, really Ernie, right? huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking Ernie got taken down right away. <laughs> that guy was like, this guy's doing the 8500. I'm going to fuck him up. <laughs> Is this one of our listeners? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was fucking waiting, boy. Get a stream snipe. Fre Get a stream snipe. Fucking snatching bodies. <laughs> for, uh, for me, there was a song by 50 Cent, and uh, I, I grew up a big... Big G Unit, Fifty Cent fan, and uh, there's a song called ba Baltimore Love Song, and uh, I thought it was about a f I thought it was about a love song. I thought it was about love and stuff, 
It was talking okay. about his love for heroin. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Growing up, I lis listening to it later in life, I'm like, why the fuck did my parents allow me to listen to this at 10 years old? I was like, I was singing the lyrics, and I was like, oh, holy shit. Put I that, that needle little... to that arm, princess. Yeah. And that wasn't a fucking clue? No, no, that I thought that was the, the needle was uh, your love. His you know? dick. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh He's poking her. <laughs> Giving her a good old-fashioned poke. Yeah, um, I think for right. me... <laughs> um, I think for me, uh, the Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin, I thought it was about immigrants. Uh, it is not. It's about Vikings. Um, and... Uh, but, I, I mean, I don't have anything more profound than that, so... Um, anyway, back to Charles Manson. <laughs> um, so, we haven't even gotten to the second murder yet. Um, <laughs> we're, we're still on the first murder. So, uh, once upon a time in Hollywood, what you need to know about, the fact, the points that need to hit home, are that Quentin Tarantino creates an alternative ending, like much like he did in, in Glorious Bastards, where if people would have fought back... If people would have not chosen their own individual lives over the collective good of others, history would be very different. Sharon Tate would be alive. Uh, all of the other victims in that house would be alive. And some of those murderers that, that Charlie Manson instructed would be dead. They, they wouldn't have even gotten to the LaBianca night because they killed so many people, because the, the murderers are dead uh, during the Sharon Tate night. So, um,. Go check that out. I don't think we're going to get to Manson Family Vacation, although we may in the next 20 minutes. But let's go ahead and move to the second night, um, the La Bianca murders. So Charlie Manson gets very upset that people have... Uh, so during the first night, um, uh, Linda uh, Kasabian is horrified by what's going on. She can hear people screaming. She runs back to the car and, tr and thinks about driving away. Other people panic and leave while Tex continues to murder people. Um, and Charlie Manson is very upset by this. He he calls them. Uh, uh, it, that morning he says, look, we're going to go out again tonight and I'm going to show you how to do this. Charlie Manson, being kind of a pussy, ends up not being able to murder anyone despite the fact that he's ordered all of these kids, these literal kids, I mean not literal, but 21-year-old people to to do these murders he can't get himself to murder anyone he attempts it one time the person gets away so he drives them to the la bianca house he goes inside and tells them that he's tied them up that's not true tex has to do all of the dirty work um along with patricia krenwinkel um who does a lot of the dirty work as well at the la bianca house she stabbed the fucking living shit out of the wife. There were two people murdered in that house, uh, the husband and the wife. Uh, La Bianca was their last name. They owned a grocery store. Uh, Tex does the initial damage by stabbing him with a fucking bayonet, which is fucking crazy. Where did he get a bayonet? Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, Krenwinkel Kren ends up doing, like, the cleanup work. Like, she ends up Stabbing one of them like 16 times, the other one like 30 times, but a lot of that stuff was done after they were dead. Uh, again, Sadie is in charge of writing stuff on the walls with people's blood, which she does. She writes pig and all pigs die and shit like that. Um, but uh, just just an absolute nightmare for these poor people who were just in bed sleeping um, and then were murdered by Charlie Manson's cronies. Uh, which is why we, we chose Legion. I mean, we we feel like Legion is this ever-changing, um, you know, you, you have a lot of options. It's a lot of people doing the killing, and, and it's the same thing with the Charlie Manson murders, how not one, one person in particular isn't responsible for everything, but them as a collective are. And yeah. they all went to jail for life. All They have either died in prison or are still in prison, every single one of them. The Indy 500 was complete, guys. I know, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, he, he, he completed it. Uh, yeah, Jesus, go ahead and take a shot then, buddy. I'm gonna take oh, a yeah, shot. Yeah. I hope you get murdered. <laughs> I hope you get murdered like Sharon Tate. I hope you get murdered like, like Ja Rule. Murder! <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> why why is this so fucking two thousands hip hop oriented? We're talking about fifty cent, we're talking about Ja Roll. Um, I mean Manson wanted to be a pop singer in all fairness. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, never wanted to be a folk singer. <laughs> you know that the another thing about the the Mansons, like as far as like with Susan Atkins, she kinda gave them up when they were at that national park. So they, they they were sleeping at a national park, I can't recall which one. But they uh, when they started questioning them, they were just letting them know they were just, you know, crashing there. Um but then with her, like, she ended up making, like, uh, she said something about the murders to the Sharon Tate murders, and then they ended up, or they, yeah, they started investigating them. Well, the investigation did not take very long, and, and while you're absolutely correct, a lot of people feel, including, you can see it in Helter Skelter, they felt like they would have gotten there anyway, yeah. um, because they were not experienced killers. They left a lot of fucking clues and all sorts of other shit. And Charlie Manson uh, also was almost immediately bragging to everybody he could talk to about what he, what he, quote unquote, had done. Um, there was a joke in prison that was made about Charlie Manson, how uh, he, he would talk so much that he would even brag about the size of his shit, even if someone else took it. And that was taking a shot directly <laughs> at the fact that he was in prison for life for murders that he could, didn't even have the guts to commit. Um, uh, and, and ultimately their downfall would be Linda Kasabian who didn't actually do any of the killing and would get 100% immunity. She did not spend one day in prison because she turned, uh, on her comrades and was the main witness for the state of California, uh, during the murders and got all of them convicted uh, the Manson family tried to intimidate her. They, at one point, Sadie would turn to her in court and say, you're absolutely killing us. In turn, Kasabian would say, you all killed yourselves. Um, just, just great stuff. Um, and we're going to focus at the end here. We're not quite at the end, but we're going to focus on Charlie Manson as a person, kind of the documentaries that we saw, maybe get into a little family, uh, Manson family vacation, I, at the very end, even after we've signed off, so you can either stick around to hear me or not, I will be covering a Charlie Manson song um, at the very end of this podcast. Um, so that'll be a little treat for you if you if you like me. <laughs> I don't. We don't know what our fan base is like. How we're spread out. Like we don't know who who has the most fans. But if you like me, you'll get to hear me cover a Charlie Manson song later. So that'd be cool. Um, what do you guys, like, what do you, what's your impression of Manson? Like, how do you feel about him personally, Manny? Like, like, do you, do you, are you absolutely just disgusted with who he is? Um, do you admire certain things about him? Like, where do you stand on Charlie Manson? I guess I would uh, kind of admire the fact that he convinced and got all these people to do things for him. And went to the extent of doing it this long and kind of like how you guys said it made it into a cult pretty much like kind of David Koresh and it's just it it kind of like like yeah it just I admire that but I mean I still think he's a piece of shit yeah absolutely what about you Jude so, so with Manson I mean uh, the way I feel about him yeah like he I think that he he took the wrong path. I could see kind of, I mean, there's no excuse for it, but just the way he was raised, you know, like his mom kind of tried selling him for a pitcher of beer. I mean, that kind of <laughs> sucks. Um, but other than that, I mean, he, he was a very smart person. Like he, he was very intellectual, very, like an intriguing person, you know? But I just think that he lived the, he was just, just new crime his whole life. And I, I honestly feel that that's just based off of how he was. You know how, how he was raised. Yeah. Jesus. Well, actually, um, Ernie, before you go into the game, go ahead. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's manipulative as fuck, and that like makes him even more of a piece of shit. I mean, absolutely. Nazi on his fucking middle of his head. He's a pos. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jesus. 
No, yeah, no, like Ernie said, he's very fucking ma- manipulative. Just to the fact that there's people today that are, they still back him up. They're like, no, well, he never committed any murders. He never did anything wrong, and they still, they're still very uh, attracted to what he had said. Like, it's, like we said, you know, he was a very smart guy. But at, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like he knew how to work people. He knew how to use his charm on people, and uh, I mean, he just was a bitch to the point where he didn't want to when it, when it came down to the bad stuff he didn't want to really take credit for any of that stuff he was just like well yeah, I didn't kill anyone I mean you know it's so um, that's that's a perfect response to get into how I want to tie Charlie Manson up in a little bow um, uh, absolutely a piece of shit ruined the lives of these kids uh, again I mean I'm, I'm 28 so 21 isn't that much younger than me, but, I mean, think about when you're 21 years old. I, I mean, you have your whole fucking life ahead of you. You have every you have every opportunity to make life better, and instead this man convinced you, uh, took you in and, and made you feel loved for the first time in your life and then convinced you to do this thing that would absolutely tarnish the rest of your existence. Uh, not to mention the white supremacy stuff, honestly, just any of that. Not a little, fuck that. Like, if you're associated with any of that, uh, I mean, fuck off. But I will say, I will say, and, and, and this goes back to what you're saying about how people still admire him and they still buy into his ideals. He said some awesome fucking shit. Uh, Juan earlier <laughs> talked about how he had a fanboy moment because uh, Charlie Manson says, you know, when in that FBI interview, he goes, who, who are you? And Charlie Manson goes, I'm nobody, man. And, and, I mean, that's not brilliant in itself, but the things that he would say afterwards about how th- these are your children, these children that you cast out, that you didn't love, that you that you um, didn't discipline, that you didn't take care of, I took them in, and they did what they wanted to do. I mean, go and listen to his FBI reviews. There, on, on Amazon Prime, there's a, a documentary called The Words of Manson, and it goes through all of his interviews. He, there are some points in there that if you're at all a hippie, if you're at all about universal love, if you're all about, then it's so easy to buy into what he's saying, and that's what makes him a mastermind. He was preaching and selling you on one thing and then delivering something completely different, and that's what makes him so sinister and so evil, whereas David Koresh, you know... <laughs> Uh, you know, he was kind of preaching, kind of, kind of walked what he talked. You know what I mean? Where Charlie Manson was just the absolute opposite of that. Um, brought up David Koresh a lot tonight, which I didn't want yeah. to do, but it happened anyway. He died like only a few years ago too, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I think 2009 actually, but oh, 2017. Yeah. Holy uh, shit! He died of cancer. Um, or some shit. And like that. he got. Let's see. He he had a heart attack, but it was from colon cancer. Like his body was deteriorating. Deteriorating. Um, yeah, they even pronounced yes. him like yeah, too fucking weak for surgery. 19, 2017. They have to um, John's birthday. If you're listening, Johnny, he yeah. died after your birthday. Johnny. <laughs> um, he was so cremated on March Tex, 2018. Tex Watson is still alive. Um, Susan Atkins, I believe, is dead. Prisha. Patri- no, Susan Atkins is alive. Patricia K- Krenwinkel is dead. Leslie Van Huren is alive, and so is Len- Linda Kasabian. Um, they are all alive, but everyone except Kasabian is in jail, as they should be. Uh, Tex Watson has had his parole denied 18 times. <laughs> um, and and same thing with the others. I mean, right around those numbers. So, um, and, and that can lead us into our, our probably the last thing we're going to discuss tonight, which is Manson Family Vacation. Um, so this is a movie that was made by the Duplass brothers. Um, if you don't know who they are, Pete from the League is one of them. Uh, that's Mark Duplass and his brother Jay. Um, have made a lot of really good movies. Check them out if you haven't. Absolutely, they're really good movie makers. But this movie is about sympathizing with Charlie Manson and sympathizing with his cult and sympathizing with his ideals. Um, Jesus, do you want to go into a little bit of detail about the Manson family vacation? Yeah, I I thought it was a really good movie. So the movie is based about uh, these two brothers. One is a uh, there. One is a step brother. Uh, well, not step. He was an adopted brother. And basically, the family took this kid in. They adopted him, 
uh, because they couldn't have their own child. A few years later, uh, they had their own kid, and then that adopted child just kind of became the uh, the misfit of the family, and they kind of he just grew up, uh, re you know, rebelling against the family. Um, so later on in the movie, the brothers telling uh, the bro the uh, adopted brothers telling the main one saying that. Uh, you know, I'm coming into town. Uh, I'm going to the. I have this new job interview in a in a city nearby, and uh, I just want to stop by and say hello. And the brother, you know, they didn't really get along. He was always kind of treated him like a piece of shit growing up. He's like, yeah, I guess that's fine. So he tells him, well, what do you want to do here in Hollywood? And the brother, the adopted brother, says, hey, I want to I want to see the uh, La Bianca house. I want to see the Tate house. I want to see things about Manson. Um, and the brothers just like, I have no idea why the fuck you're so obsessed with this Manson guy. Like, why the fuck are you so obsessed with Manson? To the point where they they uh, they tricked the family who was living in the La Bianca house now to get in there so he could take some fan pictures uh, of where, like, the murders actually happened and such. And uh, the uh, brother just got tired of it. He's like, look, I'm just going to take you to your fucking wherever you're working at now. I'm going to drop you off there. I... I'm, I just, I can't see eye to eye with you. Uh, I, I have no idea why you're like this. Dad was right about you. Like you're fucking weird. Jesus. Uh, and uh, he, so they they take him out there. They're trying to slowly start bonding as brothers, and uh, to find out to the location is he's he's one of Charles Manson's sons, and the brother is having that hard reality. Like what the fuck I. I mean, what would you do if you found out your uh, your adopted brother was Charles Manson's son? Like, uh, you know? And uh, what would so you do? He's, what would I do? I, dude, I, don't, <laughs> fucking, I don't have a brother, so. Uh, well, if you did. Like, fine. if that made a difference, right? All right, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a brother. I don't have to answer this question. <laughs> Dude, I think it's, it's it's just a weird concept. Like, you yeah. want to be there for your brother. Like, in the end, he, he is there for his brother. Like, you want to be there for your brother. You understand that there is that history there. Like, you don't want to hold that against him. But at the same time, it's just like, with your father being who he is, it's hard to accept that accept that reality. You know, check, it's, I don't think... Check this out real quick. Uh, side note. Um, see right here? Um, it says, The Legion, right here in Ormond. They spray painted it. <laughs> oh, okay. This is where uh, they killed that guy. <laughs> oh, for sure. This is like their map. Yeah. Um. So, uh, man's family vacation. Very well done, Jesus. Um. Very well. Good. Good synopsis. Um. So the movie talks a lot. Uh, I mean, not talks, but literally shows a lot. The metaphor is. How, how far you're willing to go for family, but also that it's a commentary about how sympathetic people are towards Charles Manson, how sympathetic people are towards ID. Be, they'll, they'll be, they'll forgive almost anything you've done if they believe in what you're saying enough. And, and that's both terrifying and comforting because in a way that's what your friends are. Friend, your friends are people who just believe in you. They believe in what you've said, they believe in what you've done, and when you do don't do those things right, when you don't do those things correctly, they're there to pick you up and support you no matter what. That's also kind of scary because it leads to people supporting Charles Manson literally years and years and years after um, he murdered those people and after the disassembly of the Manson family. Um, just, just a really fascinating movie. It's not at all horrific. It's not at all... It doesn't fall into a horror category or even a thriller category. If anything, it's kind of like a like an independent comedy, is the way that I would uh, describe it. Um, but it's very, very well done. Um, we are going to end the podcast after Ernie gets out of this uh, killer's game. Uh, in the meantime, we don't have any drinks anywhere. Uh, nobody owes anybody anything. Let's fucking clear our tab here, boys. No? Anybody? No. Yeah, you guys owe me a shot just because. Uh, I don't agree with that. Um, but I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, so everybody at home, this will be the last shot of the night. Um, and uh, probably the last uh, orchestra. Oh. oh, got away, got away. 
Yeah. Um, so this will probably be the last shot of the night if you want to drink with us at home. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, again, please like, subscribe, all those other good things. Tell your fucking friends about us. We're here every Friday night doing this. We get a lot of people that listen afterwards, and we appreciate that. Um, but it's also, it's, like, more fun for us the more people that show up when we're live so that we can talk to you guys and, and, uh... So thank you everybody that showed up tonight, um, and we will be closing the show, um, after we sign off I'll be doing the Manson cover, not the Marilyn Manson cover, but the Charlie Manson cover, um, and in the meantime we will continue finishing our discussion about Charlie Manson, so with that in mind, what it, it, we'll go one by one, Jesus, what, it, what would you like the people to know about Charlie Manson, maybe you had some facts that we didn't get to, maybe you watched a documentary that we didn't get to, what are your closing thoughts on Charles Manson? I mean, uh, closing thoughts with with the whole Charlie Manson thing is, uh, you know, it, it's I, I was surprised on how much I really enjoyed his music. I it was it, it it was he had a nice voice. It was very I don't want to say catchy, but like it was put together nice. I thought it was. I liked it more than I was expecting. I thought I was gonna listen to it and be like, "What the fuck is gonna? What is this? This is gonna suck." But uh, you know, it was pleasant. I, if you guys put it on YouTube, give it a listen. Uh, it's, it's not bad. They also have a lot of it on Spotify. If you have Spotify. Oh, word, word. What about you, man? What about you, Manny? What do you want to say about Charles Manson to the good people at home? Uh, I think you guys touched on it at the end of last week's episode, but. Uh, the same actor who played Charles Manson in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood plays Charles Manson in the show Mindhunter on Netflix. If you are interested yes. in that. Yes. Uh, it's a really good show. I like it. Uh, obviously, Josh talks about it here and there, and it's it's really good. Um, but in general, I mean, Charles Manson was just a fucking nut job, yeah, man. I mean, it, it was crazy how he manipulated people and got people to do things but I mean he was just a piece of shit in general but that's all I have to say <laughs> uh, Jude I know that you had a lot of facts and if we didn't get the, to them during the discussion now's your chance buddy give us a couple of nuggets of uh, wisdom about Charlie Manson if it's about him being a power bottom we already know bro <laughs> um, but yeah so for those murders they were actually they had discovered, like, during those, like, the trial that they were actually after other high-profile targets. Or they had high-profile targets, like Elizabeth Taylor, her husband Richard Burton, Frank Sinatra, even. They wanted to kill Frank Sinatra, Steve McQueen, and Tom Jones. Why would they kill Tom fucking Jones? Lightning McQueen? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know why they killed Frank Sinatra. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, his lawyer, the, the, like, the first lawyer that he had had, uh, Tom Jones's going... lawyer? No, uh, Manson's lawyer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tom Jones's lawyer. Uh, no, uh, Manson's lawyer, the first one, he had gone camping and was was murdered or found dead six months later, and they believe that the the family had something to do with that as well. Oh uh, shit! Manson also uh, received the most letters in history for a prisoner. Oh shit! That I mean, boom, goes into exactly what we're talking about. This is gold, dude. Keep going. Hit us yeah. with it. And he was actually, when he was first incarcerated, he, uh, before, prior to the murders, he was actually involved with Scientology. He looked into it, and it was too outlandish for him. Charles Manson. <laughs> <laughs> that says a lot. Uh, yeah, it says a lot, dude. It <laughs> says a lot. Uh, his, his songs, he's had songs covered by uh, Red Cross, Guns N' Roses, and, uh, of course, Marilyn Manson. Also, I believe that, uh, what's his name, uh, Trent Reznor had the door when they wrote that, that album, with, uh, what is that one, uh, what the fuck you like music. an animal song? Uh, Closer. Yeah, they I had wanna that, fuck uh, you like an animal. What, they, yeah. they destroyed that oh, home. Oh, bestiality again, huh? There you go. <laughs> they destroyed that home, the, the, where they were, you know, I mean, of course, where those murders occurred, and supposedly Trent Reznor obtained the door where they wrote Pig and Blood. So. Nice. That's fucking cool. Nine Inch Nail. That dude has that shit. Good. Pretty sure that's... Oh, and as far as, like, uh, his whole mother deal, 
Yeah, so um, he was given no name when he was born. His mom was uh, 16 at the time of his birth, and she was a, uh, a drunken prostitute. And his oh. name was Charles Maddox. So it wasn't mentioned just yet. And then, uh, yeah, like how I mentioned earlier, his mom had tried selling him as a child to a waitress in exchange for a pitcher. One pitcher of beer. Yeah, I mean, you, you feel like you could no negotiate a lot more than that for a white baby. <laughs> um, I feel like you could get a lot more than a pitcher of beer, but uh, uh, excellent, Jude. Excellent research. I, I actually like that we did that all at the end, um, but we'll give you more of a chance next time to get some of those good facts in there, because that was, that was fantastic. Um, where are we at, Ernie? So, how many kills you got, buddy? I got one so far. Does it look like they're going to get out of here? I got two gens left. Ooh, you got flashlight. Well, we're going to go ahead and take this last shot while we see what the outcome of this killer game will be for Ernie. Um, I'm going to make one last uh, ploy here. Sound like a salesman, and I'm sorry, but please like, please subscribe, please tell your friends. Please keep commenting. Please reach out to us on social media. You can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at at Death by Daylight, and we will try to get on as many platforms as we can. Uh, you guys are the fucking best. We have gotten a pretty solid group of people returning every week, and we couldn't be more grateful for, the, grateful for that. Um, we will continue to do this every week throughout the quarantine. It's lifted. It's not lifted. Uh, we will continue to do this. We do not have a game plan for next week, at least not the one that we've agreed on, although we've discussed it. So if you maybe as a last-ditch effort to get an episode that you're specifically dis uh, excited about. Leave your suggestions down below. We will see what we can do for next week or the weeks coming. Um, and uh, and we absolutely appreciate you guys being here and watching us. It means, it means the world, and it means that we're going to keep doing this podcast until nobody shows up. So, um, thank you again. Um, Ernie... <laughs> uh, has, has a four kill game though, right? You have a four kill game tonight? Yeah, I do. That's huge. I mean, yeah. as long as you get a 4K with your main, can't make fun of you, really. I mean, we could, but we won't. Uh, talking or about I... huge, fun fact Marilyn. I keep on calling him Marilyn, <laughs> goddammit. Alright, let's Marilyn? talk about his. Let's, hear, let's, talk about his let's talk about his penis size, too. Charles Manson. Marilyn Manson's penis size? Let's talk about both of them. Okay. All right. I want you to guess their girth. What? Right now. No, we're not doing <laughs> you know, this. You know Charlie Manson's exact girth? It's online. Uh, one point eight seven inches around. He had a real kind of kind of a skinny cack. Well, cack. what are you, you going to go, go with, Jude? Uh, the circumference. Um. <laughs> 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 Shit, maybe he was about uh, about an inch and a half around. Maybe less. Why are you maybe guys talking about five. penises? Is this what we've become? You know, Fuck off, Ernie. Know, Kill bro. more people. Better than bestiality, bro. Relax. It's not better than bestiality, <laughs> but go ahead. Manny, what's your, your girth size on Charlie Manson? Tell us. Charlie Manson's girth size, and then tell us your girth size, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Manny? Manny logged out. He's Manny, like, Man Manny's you're dead. Right. <laughs> you're gonna draw the line. I'm not gonna be talking about I think it. he's actually gone. No, I'm part of Dick. <laughs> no, I, I really. I mean, he definitely would have responded at least by now, at least to defend himself. So I think he really is gone for some reason. <laughs> uh, thanks, Matty. Thanks for fucking sticking it out there, bud. See if we ever get you back as a guest. No, no pun intended with the sticking out. You don't have to tell us your girth. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> we won't ask your girth again, but also you're not going to be invited back as a guest until you tell us your girth. So I guess um, Manny commented. I guess my head. <laughs> said quit much like your bird my friend <laughs> um yeah i mean uh too legit too legit to quit um so let's go ahead and take this last shot and then we'll get into the closing part of this episode ah, cheers uh, for to, the shot. to everyone at home um 
We already cheers to Helter Skelter. Let's cheers, cheers to, to uh to uh, Charles Manson's uh 5.6 girth inch peanut. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I want to cheers to uh, Leslie Van Huron. Um, who was the only good-looking member of the Manson family? <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> oh my God! I've taken... <laughs> that bullet. They've taken too many Got shots it. here, boys. Too many shots here, boys. Oh, are you getting tea bagged? Yeah, with a bunch of red ranks again. It's an SWF. So, mm. yeah, of course, Legion gets fucked. <laughs> I gotta kill them. Mm -hmm. They destroyed all the totems too, so my Noed was dead. <laughs> well. <laughs> so, we're gonna get into uh, the last part of uh, the night where uh, our boy over here, Josh, is going to be covering a uh, Manson song for us. What song are you that. playing tonight for us, buddy? Uh, I will. I will be doing "True Love Will Find You." Um, it's a song that he apparently wrote about one of his family members. I mean, not actual family, but Manson family. Um, and it talks about love. It's actually a fucking beautiful song. It sounds like he took it from the Mexicans. A little bit of cultural <laughs> cultural uh, appropriation here. Uh, it sounds like a very Hispanic song. Uh, that's the one that I'll be playing. But I'll do it after everybody signs off. So you can stick around for it or you can choose not to, uh, which is fine with me. Everybody uh, go ahead and sign off and then I'll go last. All right. Well, this is uh, Catch Me on uh, PSN, J Texas Music. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to all you all again. Jesus, out. And I'll be going. You can get me on... Uh... You can add me on my PlayStation Network name, Theon Jude. It's basically Christian, T-I-A-N, middle name Jude. Bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, I stuck tonight, sorry. But uh, no Poochie Vert 666, hit me up. And uh, thanks for watching, Vicky. Peace. Jude actually, oh, I thought he actually left the party right now. I was like... Actually signed out. He's like, I don't want to hear Josh's song. <laughs> Fucking dipped. <laughs> Are we off the air? No, no, we're not. We're not. No, Josh is I'm gonna, gonna play do this. Song. I'm gonna play the song first, and then we'll be off the air. So uh, this is "You Must Find True Love" uh, by Charles Manson. <laughs> is it too loud? No, you're good. I'm good. You must live to find love And you'll try many times But your heart is still young And the true love you'll find You think that true love Your first love it lasts but the time will come when the feeling will pass. Pass like a leaf on a windy day. Pass like the clouds after rain. So brush away every tiny tear. Your love will shine again. No, don't cry, my little one. Always think of tomorrow. One day you'll look back and be glad for all the sorrow. Oh, yes, your life has just begun. You'll find yourself another man. So brush away those tiny tears Your love will shine again 
No, don't cry, my little one. Always think of tomorrow. Jesus Christ. One day you'll look back and be glad for all the sorrow. And be glad for all the sorrow. Yeah, that was a terrible cover yeah. of Charlie Nelson's song. Um, thanks yeah. for everybody that stuck around. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Dracula been... musical! <laughs> <laughs> it could have been better, but it wasn't. Um... That's what Ernie often tells those women. <laughs> uh, <ew. laughs> it could have been better, <laughs> it wasn't. Um, I promise I'm a better musician than that. If you want to check me out, you can check me out on YouTube at Josh. Marine, M-A-R-N, uh, where you will hear a lot better music than that, because I'm, I'm better than that. But uh, that was my Charlie Manson cover. We're out for the night. Good night, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next week. Burp, 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 burp.